Hi, I'm Nicola Shongwe. Welcome to the second lesson in the series on narrative writing. Today, we're going to look at how to structure your essay so that it tells the story in the most effective way. Now, imagine you had to solve a complex mathematical problem. You wouldn't just dive in and choose an answer at random. You would follow a formula or some sort of method that you know would lead you to the correct answer. So in this lesson, we're going to show you some formulas that will help you in solving the problems of narrative writing. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to Use an effective writing process for your narrative writing and improve the content of your narrative writing. Now even if you're not the most creative writer, following a process will help to make your writing more lively and more enjoyable to read. And of course the spin-off of that is better marks in the exams. So let's look at the first step. Step one, choose a topic. You will normally be given a number of topics from which to choose. To choose the best topic for you, first rule out topics that you don't understand. If you don't understand the topic, there's no way that you can write well about it. Then you want to choose a style that suits your talents. During the year, you want to try and identify which your strongest style is so that you can use that one in the exams and you're more likely to get a better result. And finally, avoid being too emotional. You don't want to lecture the reader. Also, avoid argumentative essays, especially if you don't have the facts to support your argument with evidence and examples. So what happens if you've done all this and you still can't make up your mind? Well, if you have to decide between two topics, why not make up a mind map and that way you'll be able to see which topic you have more ideas on. Just remember though that in an exam situation, don't change your mind because you're likely to run out of time. The next step is have a brainstorm. Once you've chosen your topic, jot down any keywords or phrases that come to mind. At this stage, don't worry if you think your idea is silly or doesn't quite tie in with the topic. Just jot down everything and you can cross it out at a later stage if you wish. Now once you've got all your ideas together, step three is to plan your essay. Planning involves deciding what key points you want to include and the order that they should logically follow. Some good ways of doing this include Grouping ideas that go together by highlighting them in the same color. You can also number your ideas so you know the order they will follow in your essay. You also need to decide how you will start and end your essay. Step four is to write your first draft. A draft is your first attempt at writing an essay. Don't expect your first draft to be perfect. When you write a draft of an essay, it should have an introduction, a conclusion, and a series of paragraphs that run in a logical order. In other words, you're building on the planning you did in step three. If you're running out of time, you may want to skip this next section. Redraft your essay. Redrafting simply means improving on your first draft. When you read through your draft, you may decide that some parts need more detail or that other parts would work better if they were swapped around or rearranged somehow. You may also decide to leave some paragraphs out altogether, for example, if they don't tie in well enough. Now you simply do all these adjustments by crossing out areas that you don't want or just indicating with an arrow how you're going to rearrange those paragraphs. It's then time to edit your essay. Once you're happy with your essay, 
you can then tidy it up by correcting the spelling and grammar. To do this, always read through your essay at least twice to look for any mistakes that you may have missed during the drafting process. If you're in class, you can consult a dictionary or ask a friend to read it through for you. During the editing phase, you should also remember to check your word limit. An easy way to monitor this is to count how many words you usually write per line and per page. This way, you can estimate how many words you've got without having to count out every single one. And now finally, on to the last step. Step 7. Publish your essay. Neat work makes a good impression and it makes your work easier to read. This may mean more marks. If you're completing an essay in class or at home, you'll have an opportunity to rewrite it so that it's neat. But remember, in exam conditions, you won't have the time. So try to write a neat draft the first time. Okay, so now that you have an idea of the process involved in planning your narrative writing, I'm sure that you're wondering how you can improve the content. Let's start off by looking at a couple of things you need to avoid. The first problem is unoriginal plots. Don't copy your stories from the movies. Believe it or not, even teachers go to the movies, and they'll be able to tell where you got your story from. The next problem is hackneyed plots. By hackneyed, I mean plots that are cliched and worn out. We've heard them all before. For example, learners often want to write about ghost stories with haunted houses and creaking stairs and so on. This is not original. Our final problem is weak endings. Don't start writing your essay before you know how to end it. This will help you to avoid weak endings like, and then I woke up and found it was all a dream. So, if this is what not to do, what should you do to make your narrative writing fresh and original? Here are some pointers. Firstly, write from personal experience. Instead of making up a story, you can write about something that has actually happened to you or an event that you were personally involved in. If you write a personal narrative, you don't have to think up a plot. You already know what happened. And when you write about it, your sincerity and emotion will show through. You should also include detail in your stories. It's better to have one climax or high point that you explain and describe in lots of imaginative detail than to have a number of different events that you don't explain clearly or adequately. Build on your climax by not only writing about the action, but including some of the participants' thinking. You can do this by using direct speech or by including their thoughts in quotation marks. Another pointer for successful narrative writing is to use interesting structure. One way of structuring your story is to start in the past and move through to the present day. This is especially effective for writing biographies. Let's look at an example. Wilma Rudolph was the 20th of 22 children. She was born prematurely and her parents doubted she would live. Then, when she was four, she contracted double pneumonia and scarlet fever, which left her with a paralyzed right leg that forced her to wear a brace. When she was nine, she took off the brace and started walking without it. Doctors said it was a miracle. She then decided to become a runner. She entered a race and came last. Everyone told her to quit, but she kept on trying. At last, she won a race, and then another, and then another. Eventually, the girl who was told she would never walk went on to win three Olympic gold medals. In this case, it has worked well to start the story with the beginning of Wilma's life 
and work on towards the end because you get to see the successive hardships that she's had to overcome before finally winning an Olympic gold medal. This is the climax of the story and each event builds up towards this and shows what an achievement it was. Another way to structure your writing is to start in the present day and then to go backwards to the beginning to see how it all began. Let's look at an example of this. Walt Disney, the mastermind behind Disney World and a pioneer of animation, wasn't always so successful. When he was 21 years old, he went broke and had to sleep on cushions from an old sofa and eat cold beans out of a can. He was also fired by the editor of a newspaper who said that he had no imagination. Introducing the story with the result and then going back in time to this point emphasizes the irony of someone telling Disney that he had no imagination when in fact the whole of Disney World is built on imagination. The final structure we will be discussing is the use of flashbacks to swap between the present and the past. This is a tricky technique as the writer has to give sufficient clues to the reader to indicate to them whether they are in the present or the past. Okay, it's time for today's task. Choose one of these opening sentences and plan how you would write a narrative story on it. By 10.45, it was all over. I'll never forget the night when disaster visited our home. Why me? I screamed. It was all too surreal. It's not necessary to write the essay, but on your plan, indicate your key ideas and the way that you would order the paragraphs. Writing well takes practice. If you read and write more, you will get better at all aspects. And as Jackie Collins put it, if you want to be a writer, stop talking about it and start writing. See you next time.